you are listening to Bedtime Dreamy Tales. Subscribe to our channel for new story. Story title, The Master Cat or Puss in Boots. Once upon a time, in a quaint village, there was a miller who, upon his passing, left his modest estate to his three sons. The eldest inherited the mill, the second took the donkey, and the youngest, Jack, was left with nothing but a scrappy cat named Puss. Jack was despondent, feeling his inheritance was worthless. My brothers have something to work with, he lamented. But what can I do with a mere cat? I'll soon starve. However, Puss, who was much more than an ordinary cat, heard Jack's woes and spoke up. Master, do not be distressed. If you grant me a bag and a pair of boots, I will show you that your fortune is not as bleak as you think. Surprised but intrigued, Jack recalled Puss's cunning ways with catching mice and decided to give him a chance. He procured a sturdy bag and had a fine pair of boots made for his feline companion. With his new attire, Puss set off with the bag slung over his shoulder. He went to a lush meadow filled with rabbits. Craftily, he laid out some bran and greens in the bag and pretended to be dead. It wasn't long before a curious young rabbit hopped into the bag. Puss swiftly pulled the strings, capturing the rabbit, and set off to the royal palace. Upon reaching the palace, Puss was granted an audience with the king. With a deep bow, he presented the rabbit. A gift from my noble lord, the master of Carabas, Puss announced grandly. The king, pleased with the gift, thanked Puss and asked him to convey his gratitude to his master. In the following weeks, Puss continued his visits to the palace. He caught partridges and presented them to the king, always introducing them as gifts from the master of Carabas. The king, charmed by the consistent generosity, began to take an interest in this mysterious nobleman. One sunny day, as Puss strolled through the village, he heard that the king and his daughter, Princess Lily, were to take a drive along the riverside. Puss hurried back to Jack. Master, your fortune is made if you do exactly as I say. Go to the river and bathe at the spot I show you. Leave the rest to me. Jack, though puzzled, trusted Puss and did as instructed. As he bathed, Puss hid his clothes under a large stone. When the royal carriage appeared, Puss ran to the king, crying out, Help! Help! My lord Marquis of Carabas is going to drown! The king, recognizing the cat, ordered his guards to rescue Jack. When Jack was pulled from the river, Puss approached the king, explaining, While my master bathed, thieves stole his clothes. He cried for help, but no one came. The king immediately ordered his servants to fetch one of his finest suits for the Marquis. Dressed in royal attire, Jack looked every bit a nobleman. Princess Lily, watching from the carriage, was smitten by his handsome appearance. The king invited Jack to join them on their drive. With Puss scampering ahead, their journey began. As they traveled, Puss raced ahead, encountering peasants working in the fields. If you do not tell the king that these fields belong to the Marquis of Carabas, you shall be chopped up like mincemeat, he threatened. When the king's carriage passed, the peasants, terrified, proclaimed, these fields belong to the Marquis of Carabas. The king, impressed by the vast lands of the so-called Marquis, praised Jack, who simply smiled and nodded, not knowing the full extent of Puss's plan. Puss continued his ruse, running ahead to every field and meadow, ensuring all the workers repeated the same claim. Eventually, they reached a grand castle owned by a fearsome ogre. Puss, undaunted, approached the castle. He had learned that the ogre could transform himself into any creature he desired. With a bow, Puss said, I have heard of your great powers, mighty ogre. I am curious to see if you can indeed become any animal you wish. The ogre, pleased with the flattery, transformed into a mighty lion. Puss, feigning terror, leapt onto the roof. When the ogre resumed his form, Puss remarked, Incredible! But surely you cannot become something as small as a mouse? Incensed by the challenge, the ogre transformed into a tiny mouse. In a flash, Puss pounced, devouring the mouse. The ogre was no more, and the castle was now unoccupied. As the royal carriage approached the castle, Puss greeted them at the drawbridge. Welcome to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas, he declared. The king, astonished by the grandeur, asked Jack, Does this castle also belong to you? Jack, still bewildered by Puss's cunning, nodded. The king, impressed, invited himself and the princess inside. They entered a magnificent hall where a feast awaited. The ogre had prepared it for his guests, but they had fled upon the king's arrival. The king, delighted by Jack's hospitality and vast estate, 
turned to him after several glasses of wine and said, It will be your fault, my lord Marquis, if you do not become my son-in-law. Jack, making a deep bow, accepted the honor. That very day, he married Princess Lily in a grand celebration. Puss, having secured his master's fortune and his own place as a great lord, lived in luxury. He only chased mice for amusement, enjoying the rewards of his cleverness. Jack and Princess Lily ruled their lands with wisdom and kindness, and the tale of Puss in Boots became a legend in the kingdom, a story of wit, bravery, and the remarkable fortunes that come from the most unexpected places. If you like this story, please give this video a like. For more stories, go to BedtimeDreamyTales.com. See you in the next story.